Now, one thing I did forget to mention that I want to point out, before you get to the point of starting to cut it and flatten out the end for your rivet, you should probably double check that your wire fits through your opening. A lot of times it's going to be really snug and that's what you want. You don't want a ton of wiggle room. So if you can't get it through right away like mine, that's not a big deal. I can usually twist it through and you can see that, like it's starting to go through. But what I like to do is I can either sand down my wire just a little or I can get a really small round file. Just let me grab one. I don't want to go too much with it. But what I can do is I can just twist this around in my opening and usually it doesn't take very much and then I can start to push this guy through. A lot of times there's some metal crumbs kind of in your way from when you drilled it and then as long as you get this guy through it being snug is actually what you want. So you can do this before you have your tiny piece if you want to work with a larger piece it's a lot easier when you're just testing the opening. Well, one thing I did want to tell you is once you already have a piece riveted, the cool thing is that you don't have to do the double drilling thing. You could just drill through them all as one because they're going to hold together. If you don't trust your rivet, then maybe do as we did on the first go so you know that these aren't going to come apart on you. So I checked. My tube fits through here. I made my mark of about a millimeter on each side, if you could see that little line on my tube. And then I could just saw this like normal, but you also have a weird little tool if you want to use it called a tube cutter. So this guy is going to have this little arm that lifts up. And then what I do is I line my line of where I want it cut with this line here. And then that's going to be where my saw goes. So I can saw through this. Let me see if I can do it on the table here so you can kind of see how that works. And the nice thing is it kind of holds it in place because when you're doing it by hand, it's a little bit annoying because it can move. And this is probably not the best way to do it. I would recommend holding this guy in your bench pin so that way he's not going to wobble like what you see on mine. Be back out and see how far I am. So yeah, so got most of the way there. Same thing as what I had before. Since I'm bending this guy off, I am gonna wanna file it. So it'll be the same as with my wire of making sure that this is flat before I actually start to flatten it out. So let me get this guy all cleaned up and then I'll show you how to flatten it out once you put it through your metal. Just a reminder, cause I forgot to say this, you definitely want to saw when you're doing a hollow rivet like this because imagine if a wire that's solid is going to point itself like this when you clip it with pliers, this thing's just going to flatten out and close. And you always need it perfectly flat ends in a hollow cylinder that hasn't closed on you. So I've got mine all flattened out. I'll put it through my opening here. And then what I'm going to do is pretty much the same process. Only now what I'm going to use, let me bring this big John in here, is what's called my dapping block. So my dapping block are different kind of round head pieces of metal that I can hit into a hole that will round out my metal. So if you ever want to do something 3D, this is a good way to kind of break into that. But for me right now, if I were to hit this with a hammer, it might just fold in all different ways. I need it to kind of fold out for me. So I'm going to use one of these dapping block hammers. Let me find one. What I'm looking for is one that's just a little bit wider than where I'm starting with my tube. So this one, if I can hold this guy in place so you can see, this one's just a little bit wider. I want it to be able to feed into the curve of this round head so it starts to flare my piece out. And then what I can do here, I'm going to work with my riveting hammer, which I just told you not to do, but I don't want to end my video to go get a regular hammer. I would recommend using a regular hammer anytime you're hitting a tool with it. So I'm going to start to hit this down. And what I'll see is this should start to kind of flare out. I'm actually going to go just a little smaller because I'm not seeing that happen. Go a little bit smaller with my dapping block. And now mine's starting to flare out a little bit and it's leaning just a little bit to the left. 
So I'm going to try to angle this slightly to even that out. Perfect. So now I've got this guy flaring. And then same thing as with my solid rivets. I'm going to flip it and keep doing each side evenly. Okay. And mine's starting to bend just a little. If this continues to happen, what I'm going to need to do is pause, saw this a little bit shorter, and then go back to it because it's going to want to wiggle if you have a lot of length. And you can see how mine's starting to go to the side. If that continues, it's going to get me in a really annoying position of trying to straighten it out as I go, and I'd rather just cut it. So you can see how this now is really starting to fold out, and that's exactly what I want, but it is folding over on one side. So let's see if I can even that out. And when it does start to get a little bit wider, you want to switch to a bigger round head piece from the dapping block kit, so that way you can kind of flatten all of it out and not miss those edges. So I'm actually going to go a little bit bigger. Yeah. Let me try to hold this in a way where you guys can see it still. Let's do this side first. So see how mine is angled so much and now it's giving me this problem. If you run into that, you could try to flatten it out like what I'm doing, but what your result is going to end up being is a crooked rivet. So if you are someone who wants this really, really clean, I would suggest, if you run into what I am right now, I would suggest going back and cutting it a little shorter. Yeah, see how mine's kind of like slumping? I'm going to even it out and kind of show you what happens if it's a little uneven. It'll still work. It's just not as pretty. But I'll go that route and then, like I said, cut that shorter if it's giving you grief when you're doing it. Okay, so I got a few little metal crumbs in here that I need to knock out with my file, but this is ideally what a round head rivet should look like. However, if it goes crooked, then it gets all mangly. So make sure that you don't have it a little too long. To be honest with mine, I was being lazy and I didn't measure with my actual ruler. So this is what happens if you try to cut corners when you're doing your measurements. This is definitely not as pretty as this. So I would make sure that you have the right measurement for that one when you're doing tube rivets. It's the same process. The only difference is you could potentially use the tube cutter and that you're using the dapping block to actually hammer it to get it to flare out evenly for you. That's riveting.